Hello everybody, welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. I'm noodling around today, messing around with the one and a half fret, and I got to thinking about playing in F and playing in D minor on the mountain dulcimer if you have the one and a half fret and if you have the eight and a half fret. Of course, you don't need the eight and a half fret if you're just playing in the first octave, but I do think you need the one and a half fret and the eight and a half if you want to explore the full bounty of your mountain dulcimer. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to kind of chart out what we can and what we can't do in these two keys. Since we, if you, do have the one and a half fret, you can get just far enough into these keys and then you might be wondering what comes next. And so we'll address that today. So I'm going to put some charts up here on the screen and I'm kind of thinking this will be uh, more of an advanced Dulce America. So uh, if some of this stuff is flying over your head, don't worry. Uh, there are a lot of episodes in the Dulce America episode guide, which you can find a link to in the description of this video down below. And also there's a lot of other things that I'll be uh, doing throughout the year that'll bring you up to this point. But I think it's time for us to kind of just jump right in. So let's go ahead, first of all, and look at the key of F, the key of F major. So the scale that we're looking at for F is F, G, A, B flat, C, D, and E. So if we're tuned in DAD tuning, and in, if you've been hanging out in DAD tuning for any amount of time, you know that we don't have a B flat, uh, and the only way to get a B flat is to go to A and bend it upwards. What that does is it gives us a half step up from A, which is A sharp, and another way of spelling A sharp is B flat. So you can get that scale note, and we've got all of the other notes that we need in the key of F. We just don't have B flat, but if you're pressed for a melody note and you need to get that in there, you can always take your A's, wherever they might be across the fretboard, and bend them and get get the B-flat that you're looking for. Now this is a lot more difficult if you need to play a chord that has a B-flat in it that is native to the key, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at the relative minor to F. Now to find the relative minor of any major key, you simply go to the sixth note of that major scale, and then you begin the scale with that particular note, only now, instead of playing in a major key, you're playing in a minor key because all of the intervals and the rate at which we reach these intervals have changed, and so the nature of the uh, scale will sound different. However, the minor and the major, the relative minor and major, share the same key signature, they share the same notes, and they also share the same native chords or naturally occurring chords. Let's go ahead and take a look at D minor. So we've got D, E, F, G, A, B flat, and C are the notes of the D minor scale. So regardless of whether we're in the key of F major or D minor, the seven chords that are diatonic, that is native to the scale, native to the key, are going to be the same. And those chords, and I'm going to just kind of go at them coming from uh, F major, those chords are F major, G minor, a minor, B flat major, C major, D minor, and E diminished. So I'm going to put another chart up here that shows you what we really don't have. We've got B flat, which is the big issue, and it pops up quite a bit. First of all, we do not have it as a melody note, so therefore we don't have it as a chord note or as part of a chord which means that we can't play G minor because we don't have a B flat to serve as the minor third for that. We also can't play a B flat major because B flat is the root of that particular chord. And we can't play an E diminished because B flat is in that as well. It is the fifth and we do not have that. But there are some things we can do to get around that. Uh, first of all, with the G minor, if you're a singer and if you still want to include a G minor in uh, a composition you're working on or a tune that you've learned in the key of F, then you can play a G5 chord, 
by barring at the third fret. A five chord or a root five chord is a chord that only has a root and the perfect fifth. Uh, it does not have the defining element that changes a chord from major to minor, which is the third. It doesn't have a third whatsoever. And that goes for any bar chord that we play in DAD. We're playing the root on the bass string and on the melody string, and we're playing the fifth, perfect fifth of the chord on the middle string. So whatever you're playing on the bass string, you could technically call that either a major or a minor chord, from open strum D major or D minor, to first fret E major or E minor, because we're not, uh, we're not articulating the, the third, the major third or the minor third. So if you had a G minor, you could play a G5 chord and either sing the minor third, B flat, or have another instrument uh, in your ensemble play that chord so you could still play along. I often do that when I'm doing uh, like Edelweiss from The Sound of Music. I play Edelweiss in D and it needs to have a minor four. And that's something that the dulcimer can't do a whole lot of because we're a diatonic instrument. But I can go to that chord, play the bar, and sing the harmony just for that one note and put a B flat in there. Edelweiss, Edelweiss. Just like that. So that's a cool little trick you can throw in there if you don't have that particular note. Um, with the B flat major, there's not much you could do. B flat, D, and F are the three notes that make up a B flat major chord. You could technically play D, F, and D, like maybe D on the bass string, F on the melody string, and then um, how do I want to do that? Maybe F on the bass string, D on the middle string, and then open D. That's very, you know, indistinct sounding. It's very, uh, it's very vague, but you are playing two notes of a B flat major chord. The root of the chord isn't there, but depending on the nature of your song or whether you're singing along with it or not, again, once again, you could probably go ahead and put that B flat in there vocally or through another instrument or have it just remain implied. So there's a solution. Uh, and that's real important because the B flat in this case is the four chord, uh, which is a big, big uh, part of our musical uh, experience, I guess you want to say. You've heard of the one, four, five chords. Chords are based off the first, fourth, and fifth notes of the scale. It's pretty hard to write a song without a fourth. You can do it, no problem. But it's really, it's really hard when you are missing the ability to go to the four. You have to hang out in the minors a lot, bounce a lot between the one and the five, which can be very repetitive but it might work for, again, what you're doing. With the E diminished, oftentimes what people will do with the diminished chords if they don't want to use them uh, in a native way, they'll alter that chord to make it a minor or they'll alter that chord to make it a major. In this case, with our notes being E, G, and B flat, all we have to do is play B natural with E and G and we end up with E minor. So we could just throw an E minor in there as opposed to playing an E diminished, which we can't play. And, uh, and that's a substitution that you can use. But what I'm trying to do right now is look at a way for us to play in the key of F, in the key of D minor, and not have to make any substitutions. Omissions maybe, but not change any notes, not change any chords, uh, in case you happen to run into a tune in the key of F or the key of D minor. I hope that's clear. We see what we're working with. And now I want to talk about the one and a half fret and why it seems like it's so easy to kind of be playing in the key of D minor. What the one and a half fret adds to us is F natural on the bass string and on the melody string and a low C as opposed to the, uh, and it's not really a low C, it's just lower on the fretboard, the C's that we have up here at the sixth fret on the bass string and on the melody string. So just by nature of having the one note F there, uh, we can do some things with it, including play D minor. We also have the option of playing an A minor down here using that C.
But more importantly than that is walking down C and F are both flattened notes from the D major scale. So these uh, blue notes can be used in songs in the key of D. So oftentimes when you're bouncing around down here on the one and a half fret uh, in the key of D, everything just sounds really bluesy and, and fun and, and groovy and, and very uh, rootsy, you know. But you're very, very close to playing in the key of D minor at that point. What we've got there is we've got the minor pentatonic scale working for us in the key of D. Let's take a look at what that is exactly. First of all, the minor pentatonic scale takes its cue from the natural minor scale, but we don't use the entire seven notes. We only use five of the notes. We uh, use the one, the minor three, the four, the five, and then the minor seven, or the flat seven and the flat three. So in this case, we've got D as the uh, one, we've got F as the minor third or the flat third, We've got G as the 4, A as the 5, and then we've got C natural as the flat 7. So with those five notes, you're playing all the good blues stuff. Those also happen to be, you know, five of the notes out of the F major scale. So you're right on the edge. You're just right there. So all you need to know is that we have a big hole, a big pothole in this particular road, which is the, the missing chord, which is B flat. So we know how to get that note. As far as trying to play chords with it, man, it is, uh, it's tough. Let me do an inverted uh, G major chord here and see if I can get this, uh, get this A pulled over. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> you know, but maybe in that point you can uh, um, get off the chord and just bend the note and play it by itself. If it's a melody note, or something. There are ways around it. So I'm going to show you how I get around it by uh, moving through a tune I wrote this morning, or at least a chord progression that I wrote this morning in the key of F. So I'm going to start off very, very simply. Uh, key of F, we're starting off with the root note and the root chord, F. We're going to move to the minor 3, A minor. Then we'll move to the minor 6, D minor. And then we'll get to this G5. So the G5 can serve as either the minor second or can serve as the major second, because once again, we're not articulating that third, the major third or the minor third, B or B flat. If you wanted to, you could call it a substitution and play G major, and it would sound good. But again, I'm trying to keep us in the key of F. So I'm going to look at this as a G minor. And so in terms of melody, I can bend that note, or I don't have to play that note and leave it ambiguous or something, but I'm written, I've written it down there as a G5. We're gonna play through those four chords twice. And then the chorus is gonna to go to the five chord, C. And then we're going uh, back to the minor three, A minor, back to the minor six, D minor, and then to the root, F. Then, We'll go to the five again, C. Then we'll go to A minor, minor third. We'll go to the minor six, D minor. And then we'll spend two beats on A minor, the minor third, and then go up to the G5, which I am looking at as G minor, minor second. And then that will take us back to F to go around again. So I'm gonna move through it simply and then play around with elements of the scale and the melody and, and see what I can come up with.
All right, so that's kind of fun. You know, just kind of moving around inside the key and just trying to avoid some of those uh, stumbling blocks by not having B flat. That being really the major deal. That's the only note that we don't have. So we kind of work around it. And that is just a look at kind of playing in F, kind of playing in D minor, things you can do, things you can't do, and uh, things that you might do if you decide to take it in a different direction. Remember, in every single key, we can always substitute chords, borrow chords from other keys, borrow notes from other scales, and make things very interesting. But remember, as a diatonic instrument, it's very, very difficult for us to pull that off because we don't have all of the options that are available to us. So I hope this has been helpful, and I'll be doing a lot of things like this, just seeing how we can sort of expand our reality as a mountain dulcimer player, because a lot of people think, and I don't know why, that we can only play in the key of D, but that's not true. We can fake it until we make it in a lot of different keys, and all you have to know are the basic rules of the game, and once you've got that, you really truly can get in there and mix it up with just about anybody. Thank you, everybody. Now, before I sign off, I want to share with you one of the latest modules from Dulce America Deluxe. Dulce America Deluxe is a brand new spin-off series of Dulce America. It's exclusively for patrons, and uh, right now there are six different modules for three skill levels. That's novice, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Now, I'm planning to do 30 of these modules before May, and then 30 more of these modules after I get back from summer tour. So there'll be 60 episodes. And they're all like these bite-sized nuggets, five to 10 minute videos, five to 10 minute long videos, excuse me, uh, that target one particular subject instead of a wide range of subjects like we often tackle in Dulce America. And there's an episode guide that goes along with it as well. So people can move at their own speed, find exactly the information they're looking for, dial it in, and then go off and explore some other tracks. Take a look at this one. It's all about the different types of mountain dulcimers for advanced players and also the different types of strings. Um, I'm not sure which one this is, but I'm going to show it to you now. Here it comes. Hello and welcome. This is Dulce America Deluxe. Although the tone of a mountain dulcimer is largely due to its construction, a good part of its sound also comes from the kind of strings that are used, from the gauge and type to the material and wrap. Metal strings that are used on most dulcimers feature a hexagonal steel core with wire wound around it. Round wound strings have a round core and round winding wire. Due to the bumps created by the wire wrapping, squeaking can sometimes occur with these strings. Flat wound strings also have a round core, but the winding wire has a rounded square cross section. Many find these types of strings help reduce squeak and are more comfortable to play. Half wound strings are like a combination of round wound and flat wound with a round core and wrap that's later pressed flat. Acoustic strings tend to be made of tin plated high carbon steel while electric strings are often nickel wound or nickel plated steel. The brightness and clarity of the nickel combined with a more magnetic response make these strings perfect for acoustic instruments with pickups. Bronze wound strings are typically larger string gauges and are made of copper and zinc for balanced highs and lows. 80-20 bronze strings have a clear bright tone while phosphor bronze is much warmer. Choosing the gauges for your strings is a big part of developing your tone. Lighter gauge strings offer less tension and easier playability, but can also sound sharp if pressed too hard. Heavier gauge strings will give you more tension, sustain, and overall tone, but can be more difficult to play. There are a variety of gauges best suited for the scale length of your dulcimer, also known as the VSL, or vibrating string length. The longer the scale length, the higher string tension needs to be in order to bring the string up to pitch. A shorter scale length requires little tension in bringing the strings up to pitch. I used a string tension calculator to demonstrate what happens with different string gauges. First, here are my preferred strings. I like a little more tension on the melody string, 
so I'm using a .013 on a 28 inch VSL. Notice what happens to the string tension when I take it down to a .012. The pounds of tension are pretty equal across the board. Now look at a standard mountain dulcimer set for comparison. See the lack of tension in the middle string? By increasing the middle string gauge from 0 .013 to 0 .015, I'm creating a more balanced feel across all the strings. Finding the right gauges takes a bit of trial and effort, but the end results are well worth it. There are a number of different string options out there, from powder-coated strings that reduce squeak to colored strings and even nylon and gut strings for a more classical guitar sound. There are also lots of different brands to choose from. JustStrings.com is a great place to pick up packets of individual strings and have them shipped right to your door. In the next module, we'll look at three different string configurations. Thanks for watching. And there you have the latest module of Dulce America Deluxe available exclusively on Patreon. So what is Patreon exactly? It's sort of like Hulu or Netflix, but instead of big studio movies, it's my art, music, videos, CDs, all that stuff, and new programs that come out every single week. So I'm always constantly working to create new things. So you can kind of binge watch and binge listen some of my stuff and other stuff you have to be patient and wait for like the Mandalorian right so if you're interested in getting a taste of what's available on patreon just go down to the link at the bottom of the screen patreon.com slash bing fudge at the very top of the page you'll see open house click on that that includes five years plus of posts that you can download to your heart's content if you like it it's only five dollars per month less than the cost of a caramel macchiato at Starbucks and that'll get you not only everything I've ever done from my books and CDs to videos and tablature and educational resources to new programming exclusive for patrons every single week. Once again, visit patreon.com slash bingfutch. Have a taste, have a go, and see what you think. Thank you, everybody. I'll be back next week with more as we are now into February of 2020, and I've got some exciting things to share with you coming up next week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.